And now, I'm going to hand over to uh, the groom and son, Daniel. I hope everyone is having a good time. Uh, I have a lot of thank yous to get through on my speech. Mine's the boring one. So, uh, like I said, I have a lot of thank yous to get through on behalf of me and my new wife. Uh, it was so important to us to have our closest family, best friends, acquaintances, friends of friends. And it's great, Nick Jones, you can make it as well. Don't worry about it. So, thank you, man. <laughs> I actually, I actually met um, one of Abby's Irish relatives at a wedding recently and I was talking about my speech and I was saying, you know, it's going well. It's probably about 13, 15 minutes long. Yes. He wasn't happy. He just looked at me and said, 13 minutes? 13 minutes? You're not even a funny guy. 13 minutes? If I was with you, I'd stand up, say thank you and sit back down. That's about as... Thank Unbelievable. But, uh, so you'll be glad it's about six minutes long now, so there's any bets going on. <laughs> Uh, I want to thank the bridesmaids, uh, Rachel and Natalie, you both look amazing today. I want to thank you for all your hard work today and keeping Abby calm. And uh, Rachel, you've been fantastic organising things, so thank you. And of course, Natalie's wish tree in the corner that she's made by hand, it looks fantastic. I want to thank uh, the ushers, Harry, George and Alex. Uh, I want to thank you for all your help today. I think a couple of you might have misunderstood what an usher does at the church doors, the way you were checking people's handbags and panning people down. <laughs> we appreciate it. I thank you. Thank you. <laughs> on to my new mother and father-in-law. Uh, on behalf of both of us, we can't thank you enough for just how generous you've been with the wedding. You've been unbelievable, so thank you so much. I want to thank you personally. Yeah, it's worth a clap. Come on. <laughs> Really good. Let's do what you want. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to thank you the way you just sort of welcomed me into your family straight away as soon as I met you. Um, I've always got on well with Chris, even when he is beating the hell out of me at Paypals <laughs> that I paid for. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm not going to lie, asking for Abby's hand in marriage was still a very daunting task. I went round to their house on my own four times on one weekend. <laughs> they were sick of me. I would kept going up to Chris, literally going up to him. Nothing was coming out. I looked like a right idiot for like the whole weekend. So I left it to the very last night before we were going to Paris. It was about nine o'clock at night. It was pouring down of rain. Chris answered the door. Sick that I'm here now. Just like, what do you want? <laughs> and in the end, I just sort of shouted at him. I blew it out. And of course, he said yes. So we're here today. So thank you again. <laughs> On to my mum and dad, Marcus and Alison. I think, um, I think we'd all like to thank you firstly for what an amazing job you've done bringing up your son. <laughs> I don't think anyone would argue with that. And if you do, you can get out. <laughs> um, again, from me and Abby, you've just been so generous at the wedding. Can't thank you enough. You've been amazing for all your help, everything. You've been fantastic. Uh, you've been the best parents that I ever could have wished for growing up. You've always been there. I'm trying to make mum cry, otherwise. <laughs> just from day one, mum. Can you cry already? Because I've got stuff to do. There it is, I can move on. <laughs> they, uh, they taught me a lot of life lessons in my life. Um, what have you, my dad has taught me that if you're going to have a flaming Sambuca, probably blow out the flame before you down it. <laughs> Learn the hard way. My mum, she's, uh, she's taught me that um, if you're going to overtake an undercover police car, <laughs> if you can drive away fast enough, <laughs> get on the drive before they catch you, they can't give you a ticket. That's a true story. <laughs> uh, I want to thank... Uh, well, I'm extremely lucky in the fact that I couldn't choose just one best man. I had to choose two. And they are, of course, Ant and Ash. Now, if any of you don't know Ant and Ash, you're very lucky. <laughs> um... <laughs> One, he's um, well, he's a trained killer. He's strong. You know, he has horrendous commitment issues. And uh, the other one's Ant. <laughs> uh, boys, I can't thank you enough. You've you've been amazing, Ash. You've organised so much. You really have. So thank you. I'm honoured that you both accepted to be my best mate. 
Now, one of the hardest parts we found organising the wedding was the guest list. So, all of you here today, well done, you've made the cut. <laughs> uh, but I personally, I have a lot of extended family from Scotland and Wales. And uh, when we were sending out the invites, I was getting quite a lot of RSVPs back. Um. And it was uh, quite late one night, and uh, I had a number from... I didn't recognise the number, and I think I saw... Hello? Hello? <laughs> you alright? No, I can't come. I, was like, I beg your pardon. I can't come. At this point, no, he's not indeed. He's Welsh, I'll let you know. Now, at this point, that's dead old. I think you'll find. Is that dead old Welsh? I think. So at this point, he's, you know, I can't come. I didn't know whether he was confusing me for a doctor, and it was a medical condition. I didn't know. So I... So I don't really know what I can do to help, to be honest, my friend. Nothing you can do, it's the way it's got to be. <laughs> but anyway, it was just a relative. He couldn't make tonight's evening. It was fine. He just couldn't make this tonight's evening reception. I also, um, I also had a voicemail from a Scottish relative that... Uh, they're quite elderly, and uh, like a lot of old people, they struggle leaving voicemails. Nan knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> She's Peter Kay's mum all over. So, uh, yeah, it, it's actually quite that funny that I actually got the recording for you all to listen to. So. Hi, you got Dan Dan's phone. Sorry, I can't take your message right now, but if you want to leave a message after the beep. Cheers. Hello, Daniel Malana, Charan, the Agnes calling from the Perthshire Hills. Well, we got your invitation this morning for your wedding and it sounds absolutely divine. But sadly, we can't make it. Hamish has a hospital appointment for his piles. And uh, we, we just can't get out of it because he's, he's in agony. So, it would be no fun for him sat around anyway on the day. So, But I'd just like to take this opportunity from me and Hamish to wish you all the very, very best, you and Abby, on your big day. Bye bye, my lamb. <laughs> Unfortunately, they will not be making tonight's evening reception. Either. Okay, now to the main attraction. Can everyone please give a huge round of applause for just how incredible Abby looks today? You look amazing. More beautiful than I've ever seen before. Uh, if any of you don't know, tomorrow is actually mine and Abby's fifth anniversary together. And uh, like you know, we met in the most romantic of locations, the Buck's Head. <laughs> And I can't quite remember how it happened, but I just sort of remember coolly walking over there, offering to buy her a drink, and my charm took over, and I think you were in my hand. But... No? It was something like that. Uh, we've been through a lot together. Um, I now know what it takes to be in a long-lasting relationship. It's, uh, it's all about compromise. Now, if there's any single guys in the room who don't understand what that means within a relationship, I'll let you know. So when me and Abby first moved in together, she said, look, I really want a cat. I said, look, I hate cats. Always have, always will, never going to happen, move on, not happening. So in the end, we talked about it for a while and we compromised and we got a cat. <laughs> Abby was also really struggling to find uh, her wedding dress and she was looking at a lot of places. She said she's found this amazing dress, she can design it, she can do what she likes to it. But it was, you know, a lot of money. It was way over budget. I said, look, I'm so sorry. It's just not going to happen. We haven't got the money, you know. So in the end, we talked about it. And when we compromised, Abby got the dress she wanted. Yay! But she looks incredible in it today. And it's worth more than every penny. So, <laughs> so as the vicar has stolen off my speech, you all now know that I proposed in Paris at the Eiffel Tower. You, yeah. Um, and I'm not going to lie, it was, a, it was a very worrying task. The first hurdle, if any of you guys have proposed, I'll tell you what it is. So, when you get your ring, they put them in these ridiculously big boxes. 
So when you've got to go for a meal and you've got to go through the whole night hiding this on like trousers or jackets. So you've got two options, boys. You can either put it in your jacket pocket and look like you've got a nipple erection. That's one option. And the other option is you can put it in your trouser pocket and look like you're really excited to be in Paris. <laughs> so it was quite a cold night, I went for the nipple erection, it, it pulled off, it was fine. <laughs> so it was about 11 o'clock at night, the lights were going, it was at the Eiffel Tower. Uh, so I thought, here we go, Dan, play it cool. Um, so, you know, got down on one knee and uh, went to look at Abby, I thought she'd be crying by this point, she wasn't. Um, <laughs> Open the box, Ringo's flying. We both lost it, Abby's laughing, again. That wasn't the reaction I wanted. I'm crawling on my hands and knees in Paris trying to find a ring. Um, in the end, I found it, she said yes, and we're here today, so. Uh, right, I do have a few presents to give out. So Ash and Ant, could you quickly just give me a hand while we do these? <laughs> Probably should have been more prepared, but oh, <laughs> things on my mind. Can I get the ushers up to come and get theirs? Because I can't get all the way over there and come with. <laughs> and also have a couple of gifts for the bridesmaids as well, if you can come and get them, please. Okay, I want everyone to have a really good end of the day. Have some drink, let's have a good time. Forget about the weather, sun's shining now. So, now I know Ash has been dying to do this for a Look, he's, he's trying to do anything now, just get out of it. <laughs> I can, I can do that, mate. You stop. <laughs> so when he's ready, the next up is the best man, Ash. I forgot to say, can everyone raise their glasses once again for the most beautiful bride possible, Abby. <laughs>